This is Kang and Kodos. They are alien visitors from the planet Rigel 7. They are intent on in taking over the Earth, enslaving all of humanity, and in their spare time, eating the Simpson family. Or they just want to take them back to their homeland and be nice to them. Kang is the non-canonical father of Maggie Simpson, and Kodos forms a friendship with Bart. Well, at least Bart thinks they're friends. They also dabble in politics on occasion, which inevitably leads to more world domination. That's the democratic process for you. This is the history of Kang and Kodos. Okay, let's get this straight right up front. This is Kang, and this is Kodos. Kang is played by Harry Shearer and has a voice down here. While Kodos is played by Dan Castellaneta and talks up here. Kodos also sounds a smidge like Castellaneta's impression of the genie, if that's helpful for anyone out there. As a foolish earthling myself, I easily get confused on who is who, so please pardon any mix-ups. This is going to be kind of a weird character study, because as we all know, Kang and Kodos only feature in non-canonical Simpsons episodes. Either trials of horror, clip shows, quick cameos, and a couple of notable exceptions. Because of this, the writers don't really have to stick with a consistent history for them. They can kind of take them all over the place. They can change their situation at will. None of this is actually backstory. There's no shared universe. We're looking more at how the writers use them over time. Like, let's go back to their very first appearance for a good example of this dynamic in action. They first appeared in the original Trials of Horror, in Hungry Are the Damned. We all know this segment well. The point is that it seems like they're going to eat the Simpsons, but it turns out they were actually going to treat them well and make their dreams come true. They are portrayed fairly sympathetically as out-of-touch and benevolent visitors. After this point, however, the writers immediately flip the switch, and these two become the world-invading aliens that we all know today. They show up in the Monkey's Paw segment in Trials of Horror 2. Note that there's still that layer of mundane silliness to them, that the weaponry are hilariously unimpressive in scope. The main shift is that they're portrayed antagonistically now. If you really wanted to argue in-universe, you could say that maybe they were that insulted by their first run-in with Earthlings. I really enjoy the satirical spin that their first appearance had, but it would be hard bringing them back over and over again without changing up this dynamic. The writers made it an unofficial rule that Kang and Kodos would appear in every Halloween special, and they've stuck to it so far. Obviously not all of their appearances are going to be plot important. It would be extremely restrictive on their plots if they always had to fit them in in a meaningful way. Sometimes the writers would forget them and have to add them in late. The early years are really fond of having them just comment on the story and laugh, escalating the joke each time. The long extended laugh turns into the gremlin being on their ship, which turns into Peabody and Sherman suddenly popping in. Quiet, you. Or they'll do stuff like the hitchhiking joke or the one with the nuclear bomb. This is the first time we see their home planet, by the way. In Season 8, we get the all-time classic Citizen Kang, where they kidnap Bill Clinton and Bob Dole and run for election. Kang takes on the role of Bob Dole, and Kodos becomes Bill Clinton. Interesting, in this election, Bob Dole won, since Kang becomes the ruler of the Earth. They're definitely cranking up the world domination aspect right here. This is the first time they really let these two win one. We also learn that Kodos is female, since Kang introduces her as Sister Kodos. These two characters' gender has been a surprisingly complicated discussion over the years for the show. Both of them have definitely been portrayed using masculine pronouns in certain Halloween specials. Clearly the writers hadn't nailed anything down yet. In Season 10, they do a story in which Kang is Maggie's biological father, after kidnapping Marge and getting her pregnant. They also go on the Jerry Springer show. Hey, it was 1998, give them a break. So there was kind of an assumption for a while that Kang is male and Kodos is female. But then, much, 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 much later, they do the Futurama crossover, and these two show up at the end visiting Lur and Unda Unda. They are referred to as the Johnsons, and it is implied they are a couple. When Unda Unda gets upset, Lur asks whichever one is female to console her, and which both follow after. In an interview, showrunner Al Jean clarified that Kang and Kodos are a gay female couple. Overall, I'm going to chalk up some of our confusion on our part on the fact that we're Earthlings and they're Rigelians. Maybe we don't know how gender works in their species. In the middle seasons, the writers were really fond of juxtaposing them with pop culture stuff, or using them for meta-commentary. 
We talked about the Jerry Springer thing in season 10, but then we get them doing a cheesy intro the following season, or contemplating doing an Old Navy commercial in season 12. We get commentary about Halloween specials in November. We do sitcom parodies using the awesome Perfect Strangers theme song. We get them complaining about baseball delays. In season 13, they appear in the clip show Gump Roast, a generally terrible episode only good for its final song. In this one, they're portrayed as destructive aliens, but also Hollywood types who are obsessed with celebrities and gossip and stuff. They go to the People's Choice Awards. I don't know, I guess all this stuff is okay. I do like the juxtaposition of them and pop culture stuff. It's a funny dynamic. But this kind of portrayal is probably my least favorite overall. They took such a long break from the featured roles in the middle years that they ended up doing two in a row in seasons 18 and 19. They take over the world at the conclusion of the War of the Worlds parody, complete with some mid-2000s Iraq War satire. In season 19, the Simpsons finally do their E.T. parody. It's a little paint by numbers, but I like this one. Kang usually takes the lead in these, but here they give one to Kodos, letting her interact with Bart and Lisa. This story inverts the typical E.T. dynamic. The kids are helping and bonding with their alien visitor, while they make it clear to us that Kodos doesn't care about any of them, and just wants to take over the Earth. Also, we learn Kodos is Jewish. This happens to be the only Halloween story segment where both Kang and Kodos get killed, a statistic that is meaningless and will never be expounded upon again. The rest of their Halloween appearances are mostly quick little cameos, with the exception of the Avatar parody in Treehouse of Horror 22. This one is a different kind of portrayal of this alien species, obviously done to fit the source material. Now Kang has a daughter named Kamala, I think with Kodos, but a lot of people assume that she is just her aunt. It's a little vague. But whatever. The point is, Avatar happens, it's a parody, look forward to the next four Halloween segments The Simpsons have to do now. They did appear in this most recent Treehouse of Horror episode, by the way, but it's easily their most minor appearance ever. See if you can find one of them in this crowd scene right here. Kang and Kodos have appeared as cameos in random episodes over the years, just sort of side jokes or couch gags that aren't meant to destroy the canon or anything. We already talked about the Futurama crossover thing, which blurs the line considerably. The other big outlier is season 26's The Man Who Came to Be Dinner, a controversial episode that caused outrage and gnashing of the teeth. This is the only non-Halloween episode that features Kang and Kodos in this story. The Simpsons finally meet them outside the October or early November season. They take everyone to Rigel 7, and we learn about their species, birth, and death cycles. The Simpson family subsequently get put in a zoo. The whole thing is a bit of a callback to these characters' roots, in that it centers around them wanting to eat Homer and the rest of his family. The major twist is that the Simpsons' terrible diets make their flesh poisonous to the Rigelians, so maybe everyone dodged a bullet back in Season 2. For those of you wondering, no, Sarek the Preparer does not return. Honestly, I find the controversy surrounding this episode a little overblown, although I get why it makes people really grumpy. With Kang's speech at the end, I personally believe that this is all intended to be non-canonical basically an additional, and more extended, Treehouse of Horror episode. Since the show has been on for so long, I don't mind that they want to do episodes outside of reality. The show has been doing stuff like this since the early to mid-seasons. I think where they really got in trouble was that they didn't telegraph their intentions up front. You know how the other examples really come out of the gate immediately and go, Hey, this is out of universe. Don't worry about it. This one instead opens with a crappy entire Disneyland parody instead. I think putting Kang's speech at the end makes it come off a little like the disclaimer in The Principal and the Pauper. Reality gets a little blurred, the whole thing is a little more ambiguous. It's not a particularly great episode either, it's about at subpar Futurama level. But I will admit, recreating the potato chip sequence is pretty cute. Despite a little controversy, I think the show has handled Kang and Kodos pretty well over the years. In particular, I think they've been successful at spreading out their character spotlight moments. It would honestly get a little tiring if, every year, the Halloween show had to integrate aliens into the plot. We'd get sick of them, it would get formulaic. It's been a nice little treat to see them get a little check-in every single autumn season. That's all we really need. As characters, they do fall a little bit into an archetype. That alien invader that a lot of sci-fi and horror stories feature. 
But whether it be their misunderstood intentions, their oddball characterization, or simply their scheme, the writers have done a good job subverting and playing with this archetype. There is a distinct flavor that Kodos and Kang have, something really unique about their style. I for one welcome our new alien overlords. Also, Homer had it right. Kodos is better than Kang. You gotta root for that underdog. Let me know in the comments which is your favorite, whether you can tell them apart, and your favorite Kang and Kodos moment. Also, make sure to let me know who we should cover next for this series. I promise I won't pick someone who murders people next time. As always, thanks for watching.